Hi there and a very warm welcome to you in another video. If you have seen the previous one, you would be aware of the technique that we discussed regarding the forehand and the backhand volley. Today, in this video, we're going to simply cover another critical and most crucial shot of tennis. And basically, it can be divided into two categories. There is one in which you have more control because of having more time and the other category is the one in which you have less time to simply react to the ball and many of you would have guessed it I'm referring to the serve and the smash so the style the aiming of the ball these things are almost the same especially the racket movement but why have I simply divided it into two categories the reason is that in case of a serve the service motion you are the one with the ball in your left hand in case you are a right-handed player and you decide when to toss the ball and then you simply uh, create that rapid motion for, for a perfect serve according to the time in which you have simply thrown the ball up. Whereas if we talk about the smash, so the smash can vary. It can be a ball that has been lobbed by the opponent from the baseline it can be a lob that is going too high. It can be like, you know, straight going up at a distance. And this kind of ball is giving you, you know, more time to adjust as well as basically giving you more time to let it adjust, let it bounce. Because if it, if it has simply gone up at a height, then it's going to fall down and bounce back again at such a height in which it will simply come at a position in which you simply serve but if a ball is you know let's say this is the opponent and this is you you're playing back and forth and he simply you know hits a ball that is you know traveling like a projectile in this way so over here you have less time to simply you know decide how to aim and you know smash the ball so before proceeding with the smash let's first you know talk about uh, the way in which you're going to serve <clears throat> serve indeed is a very powerful tool provided you know how to serve well and it's not that easy either uh, if you go through the different videos that have been you know shared and uploaded on different youtube channels by professional coaches so they are certainly giving you some very good techniques they do work out and if you keep on practicing you're certainly going to learn it uh, and if i do you know simply sum it all up the way i have watched different videos and I keep on implementing those techniques also for learning different types of serve. But that is the next level. First thing is learning to serve. Then we can talk about the flat serve or the, you know, top spin serve or the kick serve. So slice serve, all these comes afterwards. Right now your focus should be learning to serve on the side as well as the ad side of the court. So the thing is, if you want to learn it the right way, or the way you know it's a long story and would not wish to bore you people but yeah I used to suffer a lot when it comes to serving the ball what generally happens even if you're a, you know uh, a new player who is just learning to play the game and which is why you are also following all these videos that I'm sharing one after the other so if you're like me or you know, let's say the way I was a few years back you know watching Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray and the rest of the players Roddick, Monfield and so many others, so many other talented players, top players. So coming back to the point, I really wanted to imitate the style in which they were playing. And whenever I would, you know, go to the court to play with some opponent, with some friend, and, you know, trying to mimic the motion of Federer, you know, the way he, you know, simply bends back and then my ball would simply, you know, go out of the court. And sometime it would, you know, simply bounce just like you serve in a table tennis table. So the, uh, well, if you have played ping pong, you know how to serve. The ball, the ping pong ball has to bounce first at your own court, then cross the net, and then bounce at the court side of the opponent, and that is how the game is played. That is how it basically begins. So this is something that used to happen. The ball would either bounce on my own court, or simply go out, simply, you know, hit the post or the net, not the central net, the net that is there at the edges of the court, the boundary. So this is what used to happen and I used to struggle a lot that is how 
you lose most of the point if you don't know how to serve. What will happen when you're going to do a teeny weeny little kind of serve towards your opponent, you know, just trying to pass the ball that it one way or another, you know, crosses the crosses the net and then simply uh, falls inside the right place that is the service box then the opponent is simply going to run towards the ball to finish it if he or she is an intermediate or a professional tennis player and that is something that you don't want huh of course there uh, if, <laughs> if he or she is also a new kind of learner who is learning so he or she might have even uh, a little bit of problem to pick such a serve also because you probably would have seen Kyrgios doing this underarm serve there is a very small serve a very short serve and sometimes the opponents are unable to get it so certainly uh, the learners can struggle when it comes to picking such kind of serve but that's not our target for today what I'm telling you is that I used to practice I did a lot of drill uh, I basically started with you know two three balls so uh, I had selected an area within which there was a wall in front of me and before that wall I simply placed a line, you know, uh, two poles and then I placed a rope and my target was that I basically have to, you know, toss the ball and then simply uh, serve the ball, uh, serve in such a way that the ball should simply go above that rope. Uh, uh, irrespective of whether it's falling uh, close to the rope or at a little distance from the rope my purpose was that it has to go above that rope this was the first thing that I used to do then uh, there was basically a court inside my father's office I was lucky enough you know to get it although there weren't many players who were anxious to you know play the game they had the court I mean the markings but uh, other than that not many players were you know there or interested to play so i was all alone basically because of that i used to go over there sometime along with him sometime even after him when he would return back at home so i would simply take a ride in his car to go over there and simply practice on my own the best part was that the area where you know there was the marking of the tennis court at one side of that court there was a wall because that wall, I would know that I, would, I have to stand on the other side so that I'm facing the wall and the, the tennis court is between that wall and me and you know on that and the area where you generally place the net I didn't want to place a net, I wanted to place a rope so that the ball simply crosses that area and simply hits the ball and return back to me and this way I don't have to pick balls from every corner so I had three to four balls that I would you know simply try to uh, aim for a position and then try to serve it out so I used to struggle I kept on struggling I kept on struggling and gradually and steadily I started to realize that when I when I simply spin the ball not just hitting it flat rather if I spin the ball then not only it spins and crosses the rope but also falls quite close to it so I had this thing in mind that in this way if I continue practicing I would be able to serve it in the same way and the ball would not only cross the net but would also fall on the service box the way it is going. So this was my first technique that I started to develop in which my target was that a perfect ball toss then spinning the ball and spinning it in such a way that it simply crosses the rope or the net and falls close to that rope. It shouldn't go near the baseline otherwise the ball would always be out. Now, how was I able to do it? Because this is also very much important. The first time when you will start tossing the ball, sometime the ball toss will go in front of you. Sometime the ball toss will go right above your head. Sometime the ball toss will go right. Sometime the ball toss will go left. Because this thing comes with time, you know. Perfect ball toss that is, you know, going up at a particular height, at a particular distance within this time you are taking the racket back and then when the ball is coming down you are making the contact at a perfect position in which you can spin the ball but instead of focusing on all these things first try to you know throw the ball at a very close distance from your head like at this height and then you know try to try to simply hit the ball so that it crosses the net 
let me go to distance so that you can see. So first ball toss should be somewhere over here and then this. Then gradually try taking the ball toss a little above, above you. And then gradually and steadily start taking it to that extent in which when your arm is fully extended, still you are able to make a contact with the ball after it has gone at its highest point and then coming down. So this thing will come with time. I'm not saying that you're going to learn it immediately. And I'm not even teaching you that technique in which, you know, you first take your arm back and you simply do it in the same way as you, uh, you know, throw a ball. So this time you, you are, you are not going to throw a ball, you'll have a racket and you will be doing the same thing with your racket. I'm not making you do that. That's the professional way. I am right now just te teaching you a way in which you would be able to, you know, uh, hit it from a height and it will cross the net and it will fall at a service a service box. This is our target number one. Th that is the next step in which you have putting so much energy on the ball that you can simply do kick serve and slice serve and flat serve and you are able to, you know, hit it wide, you are able to hit the T. These are the next steps. Right now I just want you to gradually develop the ball toss, start taking it upward and uh, find that perfect contact point where you are able to hit the ball at the highest position because that will give you the edge of crossing the net easily and also falling within the service box. So if you will know this technique, you can also apply it on uh, a ball that is that has been loved by the opponent or it is gradually coming towards you. Do the same thing, do the same spinning motion on that ball. It won't be that fast kind of smash. It will be a slow medium speed smash but it will fall back on the opponent's court. And if, if, if he or she is an intermediate player, you, you still can have a rally. And if he's a weaker one, you never know, you may win the point. But that's the initial step. You know, the gradual, gradually and steadily you're going to improve this service motion. And as you do it, you're going to love your own serve. Because that's the way I also developed. Now, how did I bring about changes or improvement is something uh, that I'll come to in the upcoming videos. I'll be talking about the smash or you know how to move and adjust yourself according to the movement of the ball that is something which will come ahead but right now just try to you know um, take a quick recap of all the things and gradually develop the ball toss gradually start taking upward find the perfect point or the highest point in which you can create a contact with the ball through your racket and then try to spin it spin it so that it simply revolves in this position and uh, if you're a right right-handed player uh, crosses the net and drops close to the net in this way you won't miss out the service box that's all i have to say all the best in your practice of service take care bye, -bye.